So it's been about six months total now that I've worked with Fuji's GFX system, and I wanted to share my experience as someone who's worked primarily with film for the past five years and talk about if the GFX could replace that for me. So in this review today, I'm gonna to talk about why I picked up a GFX as someone who shoots primarily with a Pentax 6.7, image quality, a medium format sensor, how it compares to film for the work that I do. One of the things that I dislike working with this digital setup and then going to wrap things up by talking about if I could see myself making the switch to this completely from film. So a few years ago, I had a 50R on loan from Fuji for a few weeks. Absolutely loved that camera, but I was shooting a lot of 6.45 and 6.7 film at the time, so it didn't really make much sense to invest in it. But what sold me at the start of this year was actually film scanning. For a few years, I'd been using a Nikon CoolScan 9000, and I dabbled a little bit with uh, camera scanning and was really intrigued by it and started to think, you know, if I invested in a GFX to use that for scanning film, if I could get like somewhat comparable results, uh, there's a lot of appeal there because it would also be like a dual purpose setup where I'd have a really nice camera to go and shoot with as well. So that's exactly what I did. And that's what led to me investing in the GFX 100S at the start of the year. And as you might've noticed, I am holding the 50R here. So this is what I actually have now. Over the past few months, I made quite a few changes and I decided to downgrade to the 50R. I've been really happy with this. It actually suits the type of work that I do just fine. I say downgrade as well, but honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with uh, the 50 megapixel or obviously the 100 megapixel sensor in the GFX lineup. Beautiful images, beautiful quality from both. Uh, and obviously the 100S just adds some features that this camera is lacking, but I have been very happy with the 50R. Okay, so sensor size. I shoot with medium format film because the larger negative gives me more options for scanning at like higher resolution. And then obviously creative options as well if you're using something like the Pentax 6.7 with the 105 2.4 for environmental portraits. And then also depending which medium format size you choose, uh, you get different aspect ratios. So my hope was that the GFX could check some of those boxes. And obviously the sensor in the GFX isn't a true 645 in size. When you compare it to film, it's kind of like an in-between, but it's still larger than full frame. And with that uh, comes a native 4.3 aspect ratio. And for scanning, for the work that I do, that's absolutely important just because when I'm scanning 645 film, I don't have to crop at all. I can fill the frame or when I'm scanning 6.7 film, which is 4.5, I'm just losing a bit of the edges compared to if I was shooting on a 3.2 sensor, I'd be cropping for both unless I was stitching or something like that. But also when shooting, uh, 4.3 is one of my favorite aspect ratios. So to have a camera with that native sensor size is a lot of fun. And then I would say over the past year, I've probably been shooting um, mostly 4.5 obviously with a 6.7 camera. So the cool thing with this, with a 50 megapixel sensor and with that native 4.3 size, I find myself shooting this in crop mode. I'm only losing a little bit of each side and it's still plenty of resolution, but that's been a huge appeal to me. It's just that flexibility to shoot in 4.3 or to shoot in 4.5. The other thing though, beyond the sensor size, is just the fact that since the GFX cameras are mirrorless, there's all sorts of options when it comes to optics. Fuji has been one of my favorite lens manufacturers for a while now. And with the GF system, there's all sorts of options to choose from, obviously very high quality optics. Uh, the only downside I guess you could say is all of the lenses are quite expensive. There aren't like any budget options compared to what a budget option would be on a full frame. But I think that's kind of to be expected uh, if you're buying into this. I don't think it would be something that's of too much surprise. But of course, being mirrorless, adaptability is a huge thing. So there's third-party manufacturers making lenses, but you can also go and adapt all sorts of older film camera lenses from 35 or medium format. So there is this like endless potential opportunity when it comes to choices from a creative standpoint and also just an affordability standpoint. More about the GFX in a second, but just gotta give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Do you have a website? If you're a photographer, 
website is a, such a valuable tool and also a rewarding tool to have something that you're in complete control of. And Squarespace is a really great platform to do just that. It's incredibly simple to use, flexible. They have a lot of really nice, clean, professional looking templates to choose from. You can even set up an online store as well to sell prints, photo books, zines, or other things like that. So head over to squarespace.com. You can sign up for a free trial, test it out. And when you're ready to launch, you can use my link below to save 10% off your first purchase. So I only own two lenses in the native GF mount. Uh, the first one is this 35 to 70. This is probably the lens that I use the most. I've really enjoyed this. It's not super exciting. It's a pretty basic lens. It doesn't have a manual aperture ring, which at times can be a bit of a pain. And then it's a variable aperture. So it's not sexy or exciting or anything like that. But for the work that I do, the focal range is perfect. It would be equivalent field of view to like a 28 to 60 or something like that on 35. And then it's nice and compact too. So it actually collapses down when you aren't using it. You pair that with the 50R. It's nice for hiking and then Optically, I've found there to be really no flaws for the work I do. It's incredibly detailed, resolves these sensors just fine. Uh, the second lens I don't have here right now, but it's a Miticon 65mm 1.4. And this is a really cool lens. This is one of the ones that sold me on the system. It would be equivalent field of view to say like a 50 or 55. And then obviously uh, f1.4 on the larger sensor. It gives you this combination that just has this really unique look. And I've found that for like environmental portrait work, it really reminds me of the look that I get from a Pentax 67 105 2.4 combo. Uh, that lens though, I will say optically, it's not perfect. It's pretty good. It has some character. Uh, it's a tank as well. It's fully manual, but you can get it, I think, for like seven, six, seven hundred, eight hundred dollars maybe. Uh, so it's not terrible and it's a fun one to work with. But also being mirrorless adaptability, 645 film glass is a great option, a lot more affordable. I have a Pentax uh, 45 and 75 mil. I did a video about these lenses. You can pick these up for quite cheap. Obviously, they're not gonna be as good as the Fuji's. They aren't autofocus uh, and whatnot, but I was surprised how close they came in performance. Little less corner sharpness on this 45, some aberrations, uh, but it does give you options to be able to maybe build out a lens set for cheaper, and you might even enjoy the look a little bit more if you want something with a bit more character. And then also beyond that, 35 mil lenses, I have a Contax 45 that surprisingly covers. People are adapting all sorts of other 35 mil lenses. There's a Facebook group dedicated just to this, so you can see what people are doing. Um, I even had someone send me a six by six TLR lens off a of Loma Lumitel that they uh, converted. It has a pretty unique look. So there's a convenient standpoint to this with the adaptability uh, in terms of being able to maybe get some optics that are more affordable, but it's also just a really fun way to work with different glass and maybe get a different look. Okay, time to talk about image quality. So like I said before, I've always been very happy with the images out of Fuji's APS-C cameras the film simulations, the color, how I can match them up to my film work. And the GFX kind of just takes that and adds more resolution and more detail. Really, the files that you get out of this are just like incredibly flexible, almost like this blank slate to work with. But, you know, that's not something that's just unique to this camera system, especially nowadays. I even remember like five years ago shooting with a Sony a7R II I owned. And that was like a full frame 40 megapixel sensor. And it was the same thing, you know, tons of dynamic range. Uh, you really could kind of go wherever you want with that. All right, time to talk about the medium format sensor and like if there's a special look to it. So obviously with medium format film, you know, as the negative size gets larger coming from 35, there are these very noticeable differences in terms of grain and tonality, regardless of what you're shooting. But what I found, with the GFX, for the landscape work that I do, the biggest difference that I notice between this camera and an APS-C Fuji is the detail and the resolution, which is great. You know, if you took those landscape shots and compared them side by side APS-C and this sensor, I'm sure you would notice like subtle differences in terms of tonality, but you know, there's no like special 
medium format magic or medium format look to those images, which uh, makes sense. Just, you know, they're wider images with a lot of depth of field. But that being said, really nice files for that type of work out of here. When it comes to like environmental portrait stuff, that is where the larger sensor will start to bring some differences in terms of like field of view and depth of field and kind of how those are rendered, say if you were using the same focal length and speed of lens on a smaller sensor camera. And all I can say is that with that Miticon 65 1.4 and this larger sensor, there is to me something special there in terms of the look and how that combination renders. It really does remind me of that Pentax 67105 combo. Image quality compared to film. This is a debate that will be endless and you have people that are convinced digital can never look like film. You have people are, that are convinced it can be. All I can say is that in my experience working with these files, the images that I end up with from the GFX and the images that I end up with when I'm shooting with film often look very similar. And the reason for that is because regardless of which you know medium I'm using, when I'm sitting at my computer and I'm editing images, I'm just basically working on them until they get to a point that they look good to my eyes. And oftentimes with this or with film, that ends up being the same look. What I found to probably be the biggest difference is obviously with something like this, uh, sharpness and detail can kind of uh, really start to differentiate from a film negative, even a larger film negative that has like a little bit more of that softness, not out of focus softness or lack of detail, but it just has a little bit of a different quality to it. So that's usually what I'm paying most attention to is just how I'm treating the sharpness, adding in grain, uh, and maybe adding a little bit of softness to these images, depending on the look that I'm going for. Okay, last thing to talk about is what I dislike. This isn't specific to the GFX. This is more so just digital as a whole, as someone who shoots a lot of film. And that is, you know, with digital, like I said, you almost have this file that's like this blank slate and you can go wherever you want with it. Uh, and for someone like me who loses attention quickly, I can get pulled in a lot of different directions, especially say if you go and like buy a film preset pack that has like 40 different looks and different scanner profiles. Uh, it can end up being like, you know, you try this, you try that, you try this. Whereas with film, say if you shoot on Portrait 400, you have this look that's already there and you go and you just make some tweaks from there. Whereas with digital, you kind of have to build that look in. So that's been the biggest challenge for me and what I have found has really helped and I would recommend to anyone who's thinking of going to digital from film is to just like take the time to find a process that works for you. For me, that's Acros and Classic Chrome, but anything that just gives you this base when you go to edit that you know you're gonna use, you don't get pulled in a million different directions and you can start to kind of build out some consistency. So will the GFX convert me to digital from film completely. You know, uh, there's a lot I love about this camera. The styling, the look of it, the portability, the sensor obviously, uh, the image quality, the film simulations, the combination with that 6514 and the look that that's giving me. It really does like pretty much check all the boxes, but the answer is still no. I'm gonna continue shooting both. And the reason for that and this is gonna sound cliche, but it's the truth, is just the process that comes with film. I don't think it's something that's ever gonna be replicated with digital, you know, just the older cameras, choosing a certain film stock, being limited to a certain amount of images, not seeing them for a while, getting it developed, scanned, all that kind of stuff. It's just something that I really enjoy. And I have certainly been shooting more digital recently, but I don't think film is something that I would ever uh, abandon completely. So anyways, that's my experience with this system. It's one that I really do love and I can see myself shooting quite a bit of moving forward. Obviously the conveniences of digital are great as well. And the cost long-term, you know, as we factor in how expensive film's getting and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I don't think the Pentax 6.7 will be going anywhere anytime soon. I still really love that camera, but wanted to just share this experience to hopefully help anyone who is uh, maybe thinking of one of these systems or thinking of maybe going to shoot digital a little more. That's how it's been for me. 
gonna be different for everyone, but I hope this maybe helps a little bit. Anyways, this was a long one, so I'm gonna go, but thank you for watching and I will talk to you very soon.